project. We'll start with the yarn. I use the uh, number five bulky weight Charisma Loops and Thread yarn in light yellow sorbet. I have a yarn guide, that's what this is called. But this one, all it is, is paper straw with box tape covering it and a pencil grip added to it. You can purchase actual yarn guides if you would like. Uh, I prefer the paper ones because I could squeeze, I prefer making my own, I could squeeze the ends and get it easily between the pegs. The loom is the 36 peg half inch glove loom from Cindy Wood Looms. It comes with two wedges. You can also, if you would choose to do two at a time, get the 66 peg loom and it will come with four wedges. For the video, I will just be using the 36 peg loom. Other tools is you obviously will need scissors, tapestry needle, and or crochet hook, your loom tool. You want a way to count your rows. Typically I use stitch markers and I will place one every five rows and I actually will use two different colors so that I know this is a five and this is a 10. So when I'm doing 20, 30, 40 rows, it's easier for me to keep track exactly where I am at. Sometimes I'll even use different colored or different style to mark off different sections. That is all up to you. A little doohickey I rigged up is I took one of my Cindy Wood Loom tool hooks, loom tools. I took the plastic casing off of it and I put one of the row counters you can get for knitting needles on it and then I super glued a piece of the plastic back on top because this one the opening wasn't big enough to just go over top so it, they don't move super easy it's a very simple way to keep count of your rows once you get to the end all right there you go show you the glove my hands are small and I am making this on the small size but as you can see this is a number five bulky weight yarn so it is a little big on me if you want to make a smaller size or a larger size for a smaller size use a number four worsted weight yarn pattern the exact same a larger size you just go up to the purple or the blue i have another video that explains how to adjust the patterns Casting on 24 pegs in the small size, and we will be going from peg 0 2 to peg 22, and then all the way back around to 0 1. To do our chain cast on, you will be creating a slip knot. The excess yarn you're going to put down in this middle. Yeah, we'll get that in a minute. You put your working yarn behind the peg, which starting it in that one makes it a little harder to see. But working yarn, there we go. Working yarn is behind the peg and this slip knot, we are going to tighten it up. First one's always the most awkward, then put the string down in the middle. And now from here, you have this loop that pulls tight and then you have your working yarn. The loop goes behind the peg and you tighten it up. The loop behind the peg, pull the working yarn through and tighten it up. Back here at our last one, we are going to see it is a bit of an odd location or an odd angle but you go ahead and tighten it up like you did with the other and this loop that is left take it and put it on peg one you want your yarn coming from behind it though so 
So there we go. Peg one. We start with the garter stitch, which what we will be doing is one row of e-wrap, one row of purl stitch, a row of e-wrap, purl stitch, e-wrap. So here's peg one, e-wrap, you wrap the working arm yarn around the back of the peg to the front. And this is where the yarn guide helps. As you can see, very little movement in my wrist and my tension is a lot more even. And instead of tying off, I just hold my yarn and I take and I will knit over this very last one, which some of your cast on may be a little tight and that's okay. From here, knit over every peg Row two, we purl stitch. So I'll go ahead and do this one, then I will change the angle to show you a little better how to do the purl stitch. As you pull the working yarn up through the stitch on the peg, and then you take that stitch off, put the new one on, tighten it up. Again, working yarn below the stitch on the peg and you pull it up through the bottom, old stitch off, new stitch on. Round one and two are done. Round three, we e-wrap. Round four, we purl. Round five, we will e-wrap stitch again. Now for round six, seven, eight, nine, and 10, you purl stitch. This glove is actually being knitted inside out. So go ahead and get your first 10 rows done. I have the 10 rows done. Row five, I marked with a white stitch marker. This is row 10. So I have it marked. I know that the pink means 10. Right now we are going to be doing the thumb. Cut your working yarn four or five inches long. We're going to take this stitch, move it to that peg, and that stitch, move it to that peg. If you're using a different uh, sizing, it just goes to the pegs right beside it. Um, okay, now you will loosen the wedge. The peg, the thumb is made over 10 pegs all together. So the first set of pink ones is for the body. The second set is where you mark for your thumb. This is still going to be your starting peg. We need to add the second wedge in now and it will go between these two purple pegs. Flip it upside down. We put the washer on. For the thumb, we will be working just these 10 pegs. You wanna make sure, push this all down and that the slits on this side are facing this way and that way are facing that way. Let's cast on for the thumb. We will be using our chain cast on just like we did for the opening of the hand. Again, starting at our first peg, or well actually peg zero two. And get that out of the way. Oh, 
the last one. Put on peg zero two. And we are actually going to be repeating round one through five with E wrap our first round. So e wrap. And it is 10 pegs. See, I got that cast one very, very tight. in between here. Make sure you keep those separate. And the only one left would be this one. Round two, we purl. Again, you take that old stitch off, put the new one on. Five rounds of the thumb are done. Now we no longer need the loom adjuster between peg 10 and 23. So what we will do is the same thing we did on the other side. Just take the stitch from one side and put it on the other. Once the loom wedge is empty, you can remove a little wash on the bottom. See, they over loop, over, overlap. That is perfectly fine. Take that out. Work up 10 rounds of purl stitch. This time, you are using all the pegs that currently have stitches on them. When you come to a peg, that has two. Treat them both as one. And purl. That one had two, so we're treating it as one. And purl. And when you come to one that you've marked like this, you want to take the stitch marker from a purl stitch, put the stitch marker on the back, and tighten it up. That way it is out of the way. We are now to the wrist decrease part. Each decrease consists of two rounds. Now what we're going to do, I went ahead and purled my peg zero two here, which is my starting peg. What we do is we're going to loosen this up just a little bit so we can move it. Take the stitch from this side, put it on that peg. Take the stitch from this side, put it on that peg, then move it down in between the next set of pegs with stitches on them. Now your first round, peg 01 and 02 will have the double stitches on them that you treat as one. Your second round, they will not be there. This will be our last decrease because we are decreasing back to our initial starting pegs. So again, to the middle and to the middle, loosen it up, push it between, and tighten it. At this point, you're doing the arm and the cuff. 
round 30 through 45 you are going to purl stitch then round 46 e wrap 47 purl stitch 48 e wrap 49 purl stitch and 50 e wrap We are now at the bind off and what I'm using is the basic bind off. Essentially it is three steps. Your first step is you e-wrap two pegs, knit both of them over, step one. Step two, you take the stitch from the second peg right here and put it on the first knit it over. Step three, this new stitch, it fills in the gap. So your working yarn will be coming from that last peg. The three steps again. All right, so we will e-wrap two pegs, knit over, take the stitch from peg two, place it on peg one, Knit over, fill in the gap. Zoom that in a little bit. So e wrap two, peg two to peg one, knit over, and fill in. Do this all the way around. almost to the end. Again, step one, e-wrap two, knit over, step two, and then step three. We're down to our last two pegs. We will e-wrap them both and knit over. And then take peg two, put on peg one, knit it over, and this is where we take it off the loom. Cut some yarn. You need at least a long enough piece to weave in. You want to pull it through the loop that's on the peg so that locks that loop in so it doesn't come out. Here we go. The inside and outside. All right, let's flip this baby around. Show you where I kept track of my rows, which I can take those off now. That way I know both of them match. I've got my decrease, my thumb. Now let's start weaving in some ends. You can use a crochet hook or a tapestry needle. I prefer to use a tapestry needle. Basically what we are doing is we're going to hide this, which what we do is I am not going by any specific rhyme or reason because this is bulky yarn and it's not going to be seen. I'm just running it through random little stitches. Okay, I got it a couple inches down from the top. I'll cut that. I try to leave a little bit of a tail on the inside. So there that's done. Let's go ahead and do the bottom. Here's how I thread a tapestry needle. You pinch it and you kind of wiggle it through. So of course I drop it. Wrap the yarn around the needle. Kind of pinch it tight and that leaves you with a little hoop that you can pull through. Alright, and you see on this one, it's not completely even, so we're not going to hit it right here. We're going to go pulling it through. Only one strand. And then put 
put it through the back side. We just want to make sure as we are weaving these through that you weave your ends in on the back side so that they're hidden so you can't tell where any of those are. And you can go, if you want, you can look at the shape of the stitch and try to follow it. But really, if you're using a bulky weight yarn, just get them wove in because this is the most exciting part. It's the end of it. We've got this little string right here. And then I'll show you the hardest part, which is the little thumb hole, which I really don't have a specific way for doing it. Um, but you'll see. Okay, put it through that one and through that one. There we go. The ones I just did, you notice I didn't pay much attention to making sure it was super tight or anything like that. That's because they were already locked in place. I'm just, um, I'm just getting the ends woven. in. Now this right here, we want to fill in this hole. So here's the string. Let me get it through here. So we're filling in this hole. You could flip this inside out to stitch it or not, but basically what I do is zigzag back and forth. I just try to find places where it looks like let me zoom this in, I guess. Here we go. Looks like edge of stitches or it's one thing I do like about bulky yarn. There's a lot that can be hid. See how this stitch right here is pulling? That's an E wrap stitch. It's a little loose. I'm just gonna go behind it and grab the pearl stitch. See how that one's tight? Because all these on this side will be pearl stitches, so any hole issues are going to be in this garter stitch area. I just keep weaving around until I got no holes and I like the way it fits. There we go. It's closed up pretty good. Now this one we do want to make sure that it is secure pretty good. So I'm just going to should have made just a little bit longer cast off thread. See how this last one, I'm just going to loop through it again and then go through a couple random stitches and go ahead and snip that. So your inside, you have a few little strings sticking out some, they will work themselves in. But here we go. It's completed. They're so soft and warm. Here we go. This is what they look like. And now if you wanted a smaller size, you can use a number four weight yarn. The number five, as you can see, this would be probably, I say an average size for most adults. I just have tiny hands. And then you can still go up and make larger sizes. Yay! I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Turn those notifications on. You guys have a nice day.